There's a special case of density curves. Those are density curves with what's known as a normal distribution. The normal distribution density curves are symmetric, they have a single peak, and they have a bell shape. These normal distribution curves will have the same properties as all density curves do, the four that we discussed already, but they're particularly special in a very neat way. Since they're symmetric, the mean, median, and mode of a normal distribution are the same. If you said you had data, let's say you had some data, okay, a sample, and you made a distribution shape, you graphed it either as a histogram or stem and leaf plot or a box plot, and you notice um, that the, the distribution appears to be um, symmetric with a single peak and a bell type shape, you decide to um, assume that the distribution has a normal density. Then if we say that a distribution can be described by a normal density, all we need to do is calculate the sample mean, x bar, and the sample standard deviation, s. The x bar we'll rename as mu. Remember, mu is the symbol for the population mean, and we'll rename s as sigma, remembering that sigma is the um, symbol for this the population standard deviation. Okay, so with those two parameters, okay, we turn statistics into their parameters. We said that they're, they're the same. Um, assuming like we do with density curves that we have all of the data. And what we can do is draw the density curve. All we need to draw the density curve are these two parameters. I'm going to show you how. The center will be at the mean, mu. We're going to draw a dot up here. Okay, so that's going to be the peak, the highest most peak of the distribution. And here I've drawn a concave curve. Okay, so this is the peak of the distribution. And right until one standard deviation away, the normal density is concave like this. At one standard deviation from the mean, something happens. The curve begins to turn up, okay? And it continues down like this. Same thing on the other side. At one standard deviation below, so mu minus sigma, the density curve starts to turn up. So you can see that these are limiting. So this is not exactly to scale, but it gives you the idea. What I want to say in addition uh, to the, the density curve um, turning at these points of inflection, they're called, within one standard deviation, there are several bars, right? Imagine there's a relative frequency histogram around under this uh, density curve. Under the whole thing are 100% of the observations, right? So there's 100% underneath. If the density curve is normal, then in the middle, within one standard deviation, 68% of the observations are what we call most of the observations fall. Okay, so if a distribution is known to be normal, or if you assume it to be normal, then it should have 68% of the observations within one standard deviation. Within two standard deviations on either side, in other words, and I'll do this with numbers once we're done this example. Within two standard deviations, you should see Ninety-five percent of the observations. Okay, so ninety-five percent of the total bars. 
And finally, within three standard deviations, you should see practically all of the data. Within three standard deviations, are 99.7% of the observations. Okay. So, what does that leave? My drawing should be symmetric, by the way. So, what does that leave? That leaves here and here. There's bars in there, and um, there's bars in there. And what's the amount of bars in there? Well, if 99.7% are within three standard deviations, then that leaves. 0.3% of observations outside here in the region that we're going to call outliers. Remember this? After three standard deviations, we, in a symmetric distribution in particular, this is a normal distribution, so this is uh, symmetric and has these properties. In a normal distribution, outliers amount to 0.15% on this side and 0.15% on this side for a total of 0.3% of the observations.